It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and welcome back to my Christmas edition. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's a bottom hole up there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And the wind chill is only two below. Oh, it's only the second week of November. Oh, God, it's cold up there. Ooh. So, we're going to continue on with my Christmas edition. Ooh. Kelly Alley, Sa Santa's favorite dog. Ooh. I found out when I was putting up decorations. Oh, I cried my head off. Oh, you know how much I loved her. And she's still around no matter what. I'll never ever forget her. And someone wrote me on Facebook too, saying about how they lost a cat after so many years and, you know, she was having a hard time. And I said, listen, I lost Kelly over a year and a half ago. And you're never gonna forget your pets. They, they have the love of your life. They're just like a child, you know? And so you're always gonna remember. And I was like, say, thank God that I have eight years on my show. And of those eight years, six of them I have with Callie. And you know, with her being in the show, I'll have memories to treasure. And I always take clips of uh, pictures from out of my previous shows and put them on my Facebook page every so often so that everybody else can remember her too. And everybody does. They just say, the show ain't the same without her. And it's not. But it's still fun. And I still will continue. So let's go on and have some happy thoughts. Especially with what's going on in the world today, we need to get out of the slump. And I hope I make your half hour happy. So let's try it. Here we go now. Today's episode, we're going to be making candy. Holiday candy. Oh, lots of fun stuff. And I got some great recipes. First one we're going to be making is candy cane fudge. Oh, ho, ho. Isn't that, doesn't that sound wonderful? Oh, remember, I'm, I'm diabetic, so it's like a fit a slice as possible for me, just to taste a sample. Sample, samples, count. <laughs> samples. <laughs> so I can't get indulged in this because it's too sweet for me. But, oh, it's, it's delicious. So first of all, what we're going to do is, and it's simple. It's, this, one isn't, this one isn't the hard, uh, hard to cook one. This one's easy. Your eight inch pan. Take and line it with foil, and then just butter the foil. We want approximately 12 candy canes. Put them in a Ziploc bag. Just leave open a little spot for air to come out, and whack a whack a whack. You know, crush them up with your hammer. So we're going to put in approximate. This makes approximately about a cup. So we're going to put about half of this into the bottom of the pan. Let's see, let's close that part off. There we go. And we'll just take and shake that around and just move it about so that's kind of like evenly covering the bottom of the pan. Next, now this is where you can get creative. What we want is a half a cup or one and a half cups of chocolate chips and two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna melt this in the microwave. Now, I happen to have the little snow cap uh, chocolate chips that have the little white perials on, um, on them. That's fine. We're going to be doing, it's a two-tone colored uh, fudge. So you want like two different colors. Now you can do combinations of different things you want. You can use any flavor chocolate chip you want. You can use the peanut butter chips, the mint chips, uh, white chocolate chips if you want to go solid white because we're gonna put white in the second layer, mixed in with candy. So if you wanna, you know, you can be creative whatever you want to, as personal preference, as far <laughs> as you want. So I'm just doing these little snow cap ones just so I can get rid of these, and having that little perial, that little candy dots inside there to make it just a little bit more texturized. So we're gonna melt this now for approximately, uh, like we do chocolate, about a minute. Now this is a low wattage uh, microwave, so I'm going to go just a little bit more than a minute, just a titch more, just a titch more, not much. Because you want to, on a high microwave voltage, 
uh, no more, you want to heat your chocolate up for like a minute, then stir it up, and the heat from the chocolate, it's not going to look like it's melted, the chocolate chips are going to be like standing there whole, like they, like they didn't melt, and then people overcook, melt it, and burn it. It's so easy to scorch. What you do is after a minute, take it out, start stirring it up. The heat that's inside those chips are going to combine with the other chips and help melt it. Just, just keep stirring that up and eventually they'll melt down. Now, if it's not melting down and you still got some chunks, you can stick the bowl back into the microwave and do 15 second intervals. 15 seconds, take it out, stir it up again, keep stirring it, see if that melts it all down. If not, do another 15 seconds. But predominantly, it should be done with that amount of chocolate after you first zap it in the microwave. What I'm trying to say is just don't overdo it and burn it. So let me get this straightened up and melted and then we'll be right back. Okay, now this is melted. Now it's still a thicker consistency, but it's not, um, you know, it's not a fine liquid. So you don't want to overcook it now because you're going to take and scorch it. Now we're going to add two thirds cup of sweetened condensed milk. And I took and sprayed my cup with a little bit of ham, just so that this milk comes out much easier. It's not all sticking. You can just see it sliding out already. And we'll just take and mix this together. So now we'll just take and pour this over the top of the peppermint. Now also, when you're mixing melted chocolate, you want to make sure you use a wooden spoon. You could do a rubber spatula only if it doesn't melt, because you don't want to melt the rubber. So that's why I say a wooden spoon on this one. And you want to make sure that the spoon is completely dry that there's no water on the spoon. You don't want to use a wooden spoon if it just came out of your dishwater. Because any drop of water will take and solidify your chocolate right away. It just seizes up. And when that happens, you can't remelt chocolate. It's, it's done with, it's, it's gone. And you, you just might as well throw it away because you can't use it. So you, want to, so you don't want to use, add water to that. Don't let water get on that. Now we'll just take and spread this out and get, get in the corners. Now with lining this with foil too, it's easy because when this is all solidified and hard, you can just pop, pull that foil right up, right out of the container and then just peel it off upside down and then you can cut it into your squares. So let's just even this out, make sure you get into those corners. Covering that peppermint. Oh, this is this is gonna be so pretty. <laughs> oh, Kelly, you can't look the spoons either because there's no chocolateocities. <laughs> okay, now for the second layer, we're going to be using four ounces. I'm gonna make sure my hands are dry. Really dry them off because any water in that chocolate is gonna solidify. So you don't want that to happen. I'm gonna have, I got four ounces of white chocolate, which is two squares of your baking chocolate. And I just took and cut that up into chunks. Now you can use another kind of chocolate if you want to. You can reverse these if you want to. You know, it's, it's all personal preference. Then we're gonna take and pour in uh, I gotta put in two tablespoons of butter first, and then we'll heat this up. Same way, go for a minute, and then we'll be right back. Okay, you know, this is nice and creamy. Now this turned out just fine on the first try. It was chopped up even cleaner, finer. Then we're gonna put in 
the rest of the sweetened condensed milk. Now, this, like I said, it was two thirds cup. It's approximately like half a can. So now we can put the other half into this melted white chocolate. And like I said, now if you want to use different kinds of chocolate, different colors, etc., you can. Okay, and then one important item to remember when mixing up the white chocolate with the peppermint to add a teaspoon of cream of tartar. It acts as a stabilizer so that that can re-harden again. Just a reminder, don't forget. I'll mix this up. Now, the dark chocolate I have in the fridge, you want that to chill for about 10 minutes so that it gets hard. So that when you pour this chocolate on top of that, it's not gonna like melt through it and marbleize it. We wanted it, we, you could if you wanted to, but we're just gonna do layers. So now we got that. And then we're gonna put in the rest of the peppermint candies, except I wanna take out Oh, I want about a tablespoon or two. Let me just go with two tablespoons. And then the rest I'll pour in to the white chocolate. Because with the remaining of this now, the extra two tablespoons, I'm gonna use that as a garnish on top of the fudge. Because this is gonna be incorporated in it. So I want a little, a little pretty pretties on the top. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Smells good, smells good. Okay, so now we'll pour this white chocolate on top of the dark. And this has the peppermints in it. We'll see they got peppermint on the bottom. And that's gonna be the top of your chocolate when we cut into it, because it'll be turned upside down. So we already gonna have the sprinkly sprinkles on top. So I could put the whole thing right in there, but I'm still gonna sprinkle that two tablespoons on top of this. So that when your chocolate is upside down, or right side up, you're gonna have peppermint on either end. And this ain't gonna be a lot of peppermint, but just enough for texture, enough for appearance, just to make it look pretty. Okay. And then I'll just sprinkle this on top. And this'll be our peppermint fudge. Candy cane fudge. So now we we'll just keep this in the refrigerator until it's completely solid, and then we can turn it out from the pan and cut into one inch squares. Alrighty, now that our fudge is chilling, we can go on to our next recipe, and we're gonna be making my famous homemade peanut brittle. This is like the best recipe ever I came across, and I've won, was it seven, eight years in a row? First place at the Hennepin County Fair. For my prize winning peanut butter. This is the best. It is. It is. It's award winning blue ribbon winning peanut butter. And it's fabulous <laughs> for your holidays uh, get togethers. Makes wonderful gifts. So, what we're going to do first is remember the old pan I told you not to cook and bake in? You know? Hold them up for candy making because they're great because you got the rimmed edges. It's going to hold everything in so you're um, hot syrups and stuff don't go all over the place. These are wonderful, these old ones. That's why I don't throw them out, because you can always save them for different things. But you just don't want to bake in them, because it contracts heat, and that burns your cookies. You try to get uh, baking sheets without the edges for baking cookies. So, you want to take your pan, and you want to make sure you butter it with butter, not margarine. Remember, it's the holidays because this is what gives it a lot of rich buttery flavor, of course. Getting the sides. And 
the bottom and corner. And this helps prevent the peanut butter from sticking, of course, to the pan. Then, we're going to take and pour in our, I have a cast iron heavy Dutch oven. Now you can use any type of pan you want to, basically, but you want one with a heavy bottom to it. You don't want those little thin tin ones because then you're going to scorch and burn your syrup. So it's best to get a heavy duty uh, Dutch oven. Cast iron works best because it's thick, it's not going to help, it's not going to burn it. Because this is going to boil for quite a while, so we want to make sure we don't burn it. Now also, see half cup of water, a cup of white carol syrup, and a cup of white sugar. And all this comes to a boil, and we're going to bring this up to 300 degrees, so you want to make sure you have a candy thermometer. And this will take approximately, oh, oh come here, uh -huh. approximately about five minutes of boiling before it gets to that point. When you boil uh, sugar water, it takes a long time for it to reach that 200 degree mark. But once it starts boiling, when you get to that 200 degree mark, it doesn't take long for it to reach 300. And so you can burn it very easily. So that last minute or two, you want to really keep a close eye on it. And you want to stir it constantly, that last minute especially. You want to bring that up to 300 degrees, which is the 302, which is the uh, hardball stage. So we can just let this boil away and then we can be right back. Okay, then at 300 degrees, you want to dump in those peanuts right away. Uh, we have one cup, two cups of raw peanuts. And this is going to drop the temperature down. So be careful, this is very, very hot. You don't want to have your kids or the dogs running around your kitchen. You don't want to burn them. So I want to mix this up and stir this until the syrup is the color of the shells of the peanut skins. And bring that back to 300 degrees. And then we're going to take this off the heat. Ooh. Uh -uh. And to this now, we're going to be adding four tablespoons of butter. And you want to have those cut up into tablespoon sized pieces so that it has a chance to melt right away. And we can take out our thermometer. Don't put that in water because you don't want to, you don't want it to crack and break on you. Then we'll stir this up until that butter is melted. It can only take less than a minute. But you want to incorporate that butter into that syrup. And then, to this, be adding two teaspoons of vanilla and two teaspoons of baking soda. Now when you put this in, it's gonna foam up right away like a lava. So you wanna work this in quickly and fast and thoroughly mix that around in there. And pan is all ready to go. 
I'm gonna just put that over here more so it's more sturdy. And then we can just put, pour this right into our pan. If you got a second pair of hands, that helps. <laughs> We gotta scrape this really fast so it doesn't start hardening in the pan in the pot. And then we can just spread this out in our pan. You're not gonna cover it completely, but it just helps to have that large area available. Cause it doesn't matter, because you're gonna let this cool completely and then you can just break it into pieces. So be careful that pot pan, pans are hot, 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 very hot, just be careful. Now I'll just set this aside and let it cool completely and then we can just break it into pieces. Okay, now for our third candy recipe, we're gonna be making white fudge with Christmas spice drops. Ooh, that sounds really tasty and pretty. And this one, we're gonna start off in our Dutch oven. And we're gonna put in a half cup of butter. Now this recipe is, uh, we're gonna be making totally from scratch. There's no Eagle brand in this. So this one here, you're gonna to have to watch carefully and stir constantly. So we're gonna have one cup of butter, or a half cup of butter, excuse me, along with one cup of white sugar. Mm -hmm. A half cup of heavy cream. There we go. And a pinch of salt. Close of salt. <laughs> That's an eighth a teaspoon. Now we'll just mix this together. And we're gonna bring this to a boil. And that butter is all melted. Sugar's all dissolved and it starts to come to a boil. Then we're gonna take and boil this for five minutes and then we'll be right back. Okay, now this is all done, cooking. And Peter <laughs> I'll get back to that story in a minute. <laughs> so now this is all nice and thick and creamy. You see? Ooh. Now to this we're going to be adding one teaspoon of vanilla and two cups of powdered sugar. And just pour this in a little at a time and just stir it up, like blend it in together. Don't pour it all in at once. If you wanna get this dissolved, we don't wanna have big lumps of powdered sugar in there. And then we have a cup of the red and green spice drops and I have these chopped up. Now, when you chop them up by hand, the easiest way is to take and sprinkle them in more, so there's a lot of uh, powdered sugar on them, and then cut them up. And that powdered sugar is gonna help keep the gumdrops from sticking to the blade of your knife. And you won't have all that problem. And that's cool enough for me to press by hand. Just, of course I got baker's hands so though. It takes a a lot for me, for me to burn my, my pan. I'll just take and press this in. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to butter your hands or grease them up. Because it doesn't stick to your hands. Mm -hmm. Powdered sugar keeps them from sticking. Uh -huh. Alrighty. 
And you can see how pretty this is going to be. Ho, ho, ho. That's going to be very, very Christmassy. Now, if you want to, you could use uh, the glacé cherries, red and green glacé cherries. I would take and cut, chop those up, but before chopping them up, to make it easier, rinse them off completely so you don't have all that heavy syrup on there, and then chop them up, and then pat them dry, and then you can put those in. But I think that these gumdrops are going to be much better. Well, if you wanted to add nuts to there too, you could pour in, I'd say, well, a quarter cup of chopped nuts if you wanted to. I kind of would stick probably with almonds. You could do walnuts, but I would do, a, you want to keep it more white, more like an opera fudge. Okay, now so we can sure that's all packed and even. And then we just refrigerate this for about an hour or two until it's completely firm. And then we just pull it out by the foil upside down and you can just chop it into one inch squares, which I believe is like nine by nine. And that'll be our white fudge with Christmas spice drops. Now on the peanut brittle, this is all done. And I just wanted to show you the peanut brittle here. You can keep this, I'll store it in a, uh, tight container. See? Ooh, isn't that pretty? Mmm. And then when that's cool now, you just break it up into pieces. And then when you, after you break it up and have your pieces, you can have all these little crummy crumbs left over. These crumbs and pieces like this, excellent on vanilla ice cream, so you got butter brickle ice cream. Perfect for it. It's a wonderful little treat. So, for the recipes, let's see, I think that's, that should be all it. And just let me get the fudge out when they're done and we'll show you the final result. So then here's our peppermint fudge, our Christmas fudge, and our peanut brittle. Mmm, see how pretty the colors are? Yummy. Let's make sure to cool these completely before cutting. And we turned out really nice. So I hope you enjoyed watching one of my episodes on Christmas candies. This is a fun little one to make. And if you tune in to go to YouTube and search the Northwoods Cooking Show or even Google the Northwoods Cooking Show, bring you up on YouTube, click on videos and you'll be able to see just all my shows for the last eight years. But go to the fall and Christmas ones and I got just tons and tons of recipes throughout the years for lots of Christmas dinners and breads and candies and cookies and we're still making more. So from the Northwoods Cooking Show, I'd like to say eat healthy, be safe, and spread the sunshine. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.